Hello, I'm Lee Schwan, and this is my sign name. Welcome to this Deaf What interview. We're here to interview Chris Dodd. Thank you for joining us. We're here to learn more about you. Would you be able to tell me more about who you are? I'm a deaf actor. I studied at the University of Alberta, and I have a degree in theater. I do different things. I do acting, writing. I'm also an artistic director of the Sound Off Theatre Festival. It is a Canada-wide national deaf theatre festival that happens each year. So I wear many different hats and I have many roles in theatre. I'm involved in consulting and directing. And that's who I am. That's a lot of roles. How did COVID impact those many roles of yours? Well, wow, it was chaotic. A lot of plans over the years, my goals to travel to different events. I was supposed to attend a conference in Montreal, a workshop in Toronto, and to go to Washington DC for a deaf festival that began there. And all of that was canceled, unfortunately. However, I noticed an interesting transition. As a deaf community, we were already experts in recording videos and connecting digitally. I had some experience in similar things in my past, but not a lot. As we shifted digitally onto Zoom, we were releasing recorded performances and live online performances. It was an interesting shift, really. A lot of learning and changing. It's rather different than doing a live performance. We couldn't do live performances, but Zoom was a good replacement. It's been a ton of fun. Since Zoom was fun for you, were there other things that were challenging in making online and digital content? Hmm. It's not really, well, it's not the same as real presence. A real audience and their reactions their overall emotion. The emotion and energy is not there online, really, but it's a good substitute for when you can't do a live theater performance. In my opinion, having it live is best, but you can't always do that. To distribute a live performance widely so a big audience is possible means recording and digitizing our performances. True, it's kind of like nothing is really impossible to keep yourself going. Yes. What inspired you to establish the Sound Off Festival? This is the sign for Sound Off, by the way. That was in 2015, a while back. There wasn't a lot happening with deaf theater in Canada. I knew some groups, some individuals who were interested, but there was no organization. There was no formality no opportunities, really, in presenting theatre, or to connect people. I really wanted a festival to allow us to gather in one location from across Canada. The intention is to connect, meet, perform, not only for deaf audiences, but for hearing audiences too. I wanted to teleport deaf culture and deaf performances to one place. I wanted to make opportunities to gather us all to do that. It's incredibly important. It took two years of planning, and then our first festival finally happened in 2017. It was fantastic. Really fantastic. Amazing. So what are your plans for the festival in the near future? Hmm. I really want to bring international artists here. I really want opportunities for information, exchanges, opportunities to meet, opportunity to practice, opportunity for the Canadian audiences to see what deaf people are doing internationally. The pandemic happened, and before the pandemic, we developed a plan to bring international artists here, but it was cancelled. For the festival last year, I attempted to recruit some artists, but they couldn't attend due to a conflict. We're hoping that next year we'll have our first festival with international deaf artists. We'll have opportunities to share experiences for deaf artists from outside of Canada. 
it's important to have some patience and hope for the next few years. It'll become better. Yeah, we just have to wait. Yeah. Can you tell me about your work with Deffy, your one-man show? Deffy. This is my sign, Deffy. I created that with the support from Workshop West Playwrights Theatre here in Edmonton. It took about four years of development. Once I finally felt ready, I applied to SummerWorks, a performance festival in Toronto in 2019. I had my first opportunity to perform there. Then the pandemic happened, so I couldn't continue. However, there was a recent performance at the Commotion Festival, a deaf and disability arts festival in Toronto. It was in the spring, and it'll happen again here in Edmonton for the Citadel Theatre in January. I'm planning on touring with them for a few years. It's been a pleasure, and it's the only show with deaf characters. It's a fantastic opportunity to expose the audience of both deaf and hearing people to what it is like to be a deaf person. Sounds like it'll get busy for you soon. Yes, always. Can you tell me of some of your recent theater and acting experiences? You've recently been involved in a film? Yes. Last year in the spring, I got hired to be involved in a movie named Finality of Dusk. That movie was co-written by a deaf woman named Katrina. So my role was Coden, a deaf role. Um, it's hard to explain, but it's a very survival type of movie. A post-apocalyptic zombie movie where all the people were fighting to survive. My role was to be alone. I'm wandering around after I've lost my wife and son. It's really cool, but it hasn't been released yet. I'm hoping by the end of this year it will be released. It's really cool. There's not only a deaf co-writer, but myself as a deaf actor. Joanna Hawkins from Winnipeg and two other deaf young kids. Five deaf actors all involved in a movie. I'm really looking forward to sharing it widely. It was awesome. I'll be looking forward to it. Should I hold high expectations? Hold high expectations, yes, absolutely. You mentioned that you write plays. Can you tell me about some of the plays you've written? Yes, recently, in the spring, I wrote a new play that was called Big Ear. That's the metaphor for deafness. A young girl with enormous ears. She's embarrassed for having large ears and makes sure no one else knows. After moving to a new town, she arrives on her first day of a new school with a hat covering her ears. She doesn't want other kids to notice her and stare at her. But of course, she has to remove her hat and expose her ears in the midst of all the other kids who are shocked. It's similar to having hearing aids, but in the way that sometimes you grow up looking different than other kids. It's kind of a metaphor for deafness, and it's intended for a young audience. Right now it's a short play, but I'm hoping to stretch it into a full-length performance. It's been really fun. It's been really good. You've also flown to Festival Plein d'Oi. How was your experience there? Okay. That European large deaf festival? Wow. They had over 5,000 people attending the festival each day for four days. About 20,000 people attended altogether, coming from all over the world. 
Because of the pandemic, people have been really motivated in recruiting and gathering deaf people. That's why so many people went, and it was crowded and busy, but fun. It was my second time attending. My first time was in 2019. This was my second time. They offered plays by professionals, plays from a deaf company in Europe. We also had a deaf Canadian group there this year. It was a deaf black Divya collective. They're wonderful. I was so proud of them. It was a great representation for Canada. It was four full days of entertainment. We started in the morning and finished late at two in the morning. It was wow, 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 wow. I loved it. Sounded like you met a lot of people there. Do you still remember all their names? I think so. I hope so. Only remember their faces, not the names. It's challenging, yes. Yes, only a little by little, bit at a time. What are your future goals as a deaf artist? Hmm. I'd like to take things that are new for me. For example, I was asked to lead a playwriting group recently. And that was a two-day workshop. It was fully in depth. I'd never done that before, and I thought, okay. It was very organized and sectioned out. I taught the workshop, and it was an incredible experience for myself. I'm also hoping to direct two plays in the future. The first one will be in Vancouver in the spring, and the second one will be in Edmonton. Both plays involve deaf actors. Directing is something that I have done in the past, but not so much in recent times. It's a bit of a new area for me to explore, and I look forward to that. Do you work for yourself, or do you work with a group of other people? I will be working with a group. One of them is from a hearing company, and the other one is from a deaf group. Do you have any advice for deaf artists? Get out. Get out of your house. Meet people. Contact people. If you're interested and you want to do things, get in touch with those who want to do those things right now. Sometimes I see people I used to know who were experienced in theater, go through high school theater, or join an informal theater group, but they feel they lack opportunities further than that. No possibilities for future participation. So it's really important to get in touch if you really want to get involved. Get out there. Let them know. A lot of wanting things to happen is really about showing up. Being there, getting connected, and meeting people. That's how to make things happen. To go out and meet people. Like you said earlier, you go to many festivals not only to socialize, but to make opportunities and network. Exactly. I get that. What gives you joy? I'm a full-time artist now. I don't have another job. I made the decision in October of 2020. I quit my job from the University of Alberta. I had worked there for 20 years, and I was juggling all the theater work on the side with my full-time job. It was a struggle to get things done. It took years before I finally reached a point where I quit my job and decided to go full-time as an artist. Right now, I feel really happy. I appreciate the freedom to take up whatever project I want to get involved in. I don't have to worry about conflicts with my real job, so it's a really wonderful place to be in right now where I am. 
When you're stressed and struggling, what does your self-care look like? When I'm stressed? I don't really have one. I've been stressed for a while. It's funny. Be positive. Be careful and make time for yourself is what I would say. Don't take on too much when you're overwhelmed. The temptation, sometimes, you want to pick everything. But sometimes you have to be choosy so that you're not overwhelmed. Yeah, if you don't take on everything, you'll avoid overwhelming yourself. Are there any thoughts you would like to share with the hearing world? Hmm. The Academy Awards. When Troy won the award, that was life-changing. That really represented that deaf actors are actors, period. Now is the time that we recognize that deaf are equal. Not less than, but equal. Sometimes people think deaf actors are strange. And they would never be as good as a hearing actor. But that's not true. That's wrong thinking. Equal. Equal. Troy winning that award was proof. I hope to see more of that in the near future. Yes, me too. If more of that happens, the new future will inspire a lot of deaf actors out there. Oh, absolutely. Since you already had some things to share with the hearing world, are there any thoughts you want to share with the deaf community? We need to keep supporting each other. Sometimes I see a few conflicts in our community. We're a small community. We're not giant. Right now, we're growing, we're developing, we're making things happen. We're making real history. Sometimes, conflicts happen. It's disappointing. We're here for a long journey. We need to keep supporting each other. That's the most important part. If there's a problem or a conflict, we have to resolve it. I think it's important. That is true. Some people are out there fighting alone, and it's very lonely. It's better to support each other. Nobody wants to not succeed. Yes. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Thank you for the opportunity to express myself. Thank you so much. That's all for me to say. I forgot to ask you earlier, what's your sign name? This is my sign name, Chris. Chris, thank you. Thank you, Chris, for interviewing with the Deaf What Legacy Project. We want to acknowledge the Canada Council of the Arts for funding this project. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.